So this video is a follow-up from the previous video. And if you haven't watched the previous video, in the previous video, we detailed this wall Yeah. In this video, what I want to do is just follow up by doing this wall. And the reason for that is uh, not only is it a plain rectangular wall with absolutely nothing in it, no doors, no windows, no penetrations, but I do like, uh, I would like to show how to interface with this wall as this one just stops short of it. And how do we deal with that corner detail there? Um, so um, if you haven't seen the previous video, please go back and, and look at this video so you can get background on how that was done. And then this would be the follow up. Thank you. So let's, let's start. So <clears throat> if I click on this wall, it's a core wall three. So what I will do is I will just set my uh, view presentation to core wall three. And also I need to be in uh, my poor view manager to be able to see it. So you can see there what I mean by um, I'm, I'm showing the reinforcement of that, but I'm showing the concrete of this to show how it comes short here. So we'll start by inserting a crossing bar and from the catalog, I will pick, I'm doing the horizontal bars. I'll pick uh, in, N12's main bars. And then again, I'll just change them to a color yellow for the class. And the distribution will be 300 as before, as the engineer wants his horizontal bars in 300 spacing. And then what we can do is we can just pick on the the um, section through the wall, so we can see the geometry of the bar. Now the uh, yellow part is the bar legs. So you can see what I mean by when I say it's short. We need to extend that bar so they actually interlock there. So what we'll do is we'll just accept that to start out with, so you can see how the bars are created. And then what we will do is we will go into the view, into our view list, and we'll just go and uh, get plan zero. And I'll go control P. So now we're working on the ground so we can see what's happening. So if I click on this bar and I enable, go to rebar, under visibility, we say leg faces, we can see where the nodes end. And if I hold in my alternate key and select over those handles to select them, I can then go move special linear and I can move it from this end to that end. And I can just look at my values to make sure that I'm moving in the X only. X is the red axis down the bottom here, and I say move. So you can now see if I just clear that and go into 3D mode, what's happened. Those bars are now projecting and hugging the others. So in terms of where they sit and, and all of that, don't worry too much about it because we still need to split them. <clears throat> we will repeat the process on the other side. So if I click on this bar, holding my alternate key and select across all the, the handles and then move special linear and make sure that I move only in the X direction, move clear, cancel. Right, and okay, so that takes care of the sort of extent of the bar. Now what we need to do with these bars is before I start moving them around, um, actually what we can do is we can at least, um, no, no, let's split them first and then move them. So what I can do is I'm going to switch off the leg visibility so we just see less detail. So if I click on the bar, I can go to our splitter once again because remember we want to create U's at the end. And the engineer has specified he wants his U's leg lengths to be 900. So if we hover over the bar and we just scroll until that dimension gives us the 900, the leg dimension, as you can see, if I just scroll around here quickly, you see how that dimension is sort of measuring from the end of the bar. So if I just keep going until I get to 900, if I click there, it will split it there. And if I do the same on this side, 900, it will split it. That will give us a U with two 900 legs. And if we do the same on the opposite side, oops, sorry. If we do the same on the opposite side, just wanna make sure that I select the right one. We can then go back to 900, split it there. And this one, we can go 900 and split it. Okay, so that takes care of all the horizontals. Now, all we need to do is have a look at how they interact with the others. So now on that one, um, what we did with this one is, um, let me just see here quickly what we did. So with this one, we've got 10 bars at 300 and we're starting 75 off and the uh, start is at the bottom. So if we click on this bar, first look at the arrow starts at the bottom, that's all right. So we can force that to 75 and we can make this zero. And then for the spacing, we can go exact spacing and go 10 at 300. So if we do that, you can see that 
that sort of slots in nicely over there although when we get to the header here we do have a problem so this is 10 bars these are three bars so if we click on this bar again we can split them up we can say instead of 10 we can say we've got one at six bars at 300 and then we need a bit more gap which is the gap plus a bar bars 14 millimeter diameter so let's make that 315 see how that works and then there's two bars left so we can space them at two times 300 again if we do that it works out perfectly so you can see how nicely that hugs now and we've we fairly easily fix it up so the the reasoning was in this area yeah these bars were overlapping and all i did is i took the 300 plus another bar diameter which is 315 to get to this point and then from there it's 300 again and that's how i sorted that out so that takes care of all the vertical oh, the horizontal reinforcement now what we need to do is just take care of the uh, the vertical reinforcement so if we go to longitudinal bar this time and we select our uh, 24 main bar again and we change our class to three and we will just clear both the start and end offsets so Tecla doesn't auto calculate and just bear in mind that um, clearing the values and putting in a zero is two different things uh, clearing the value actually let's take the auto calculate what the ends are going to be but if you put a zero in there zero is actually a zero it'll use zero so for the target spacing, we're going to use 150 mils because that's what the um, engineer wanted. And now if we hover over the section again, we can pick that face and this face. So we have those two faces and we can say, OK. And just like that, we've now populated that with vertical reinforcement. Now, what I need to do is we need to, again, like we did here, yeah, we need to add an end modifier so these can splice with the bars above it. Now, because... Um, you know previously if I just click on that and we click on this modifier we can see previously we had a crank and we had an offset of 1200 to push it up so if we do the same if we click on that we add a end detail and the end detail type is a crank the crank is a standard crank and again we have an end offset and the end offset will be 1200 millimeters now if we have that and we hover over that edge just like that we've now got that extended we can then click on this bar, enable the end modifier. We still have our settings. Click on that edge, and that is extended. And just like that, we've got the verticals in. And as you can see, this inter the interaction with the previous wall is actually quite nice and very clean and flash free. So what we need to do now, before we um, copy them above, is we just need to get these clips in as well. So if I click one of these clips, and I say, copy special linear and I pick the center of that bar down the bottom and I copy that all the way across I'll just span to the second bar in the range yeah and I say copy it will give us a bar that looks like that and now all we need to do is rotate it so if I click on the bar right click this time it's a move command and it's a move rotate we pick the same origin again and we want to rotate through 90 degrees and we say move that places that bar 100% in place. Now, before we copy it along, we just need to look at the spacing and we can see we do have a spacing problem here. So it's similar like what we fixed here before. So if I click on that one, before we add 105 offset, so we should be able to use exactly the same offset here. So if I click on that and I go 105 there, that sort of sorts it out, but I suspect we might have a problem on top. Yes, we do. So we have the same issue here that we have there, so we can break them up into two parts. So if I click on it, go to exact again, we can say under exact, we can say we've got six bars that go at a 300 spacing. Then we have a one big spacing because we need to introduce a bar width there. And then we have two at 300 again. And if I do that, all the um, clips work perfectly and they clash free. Now I can just copy them across uh, along the wall. And a quick way to determine how many I need is if I click on the range and I look at the number of bars is 55, minus one is 54, divide by two is 27. So I need 27 of them. So if I click on that and I say, right click, copy special linear, and I wanna copy from this point to that one because it's every alternative one. And I need 27 additional, oh, 26 additional ones. And I say copy, clear, okay. And we then look at how this is panned out. It ends 
exactly at the one before the last one. So every second one is dealt for. So now what we've got is we've got all these bars in for this wall and they interact with the neighbors in the corner. So what we can do now is I will kill that view and this view I will go back to concrete pour view and I disable that and for the view I'll go back to standard so you can see everything. There we go. Now what I can do with copying this up, we can try a different method. Um, it's not, it's it's a bit tricky with the um, with the uh, uh, what's it called the batch editor because there's now elements that are shared between two walls. But I'll show you what I mean by that. If I click on this wall and I make that my source select, it will get the source, but it's also populated similar similar types. So if I click on this, you see it highlights that wall. If I click on this one, it highlights that wall. Now if I push the other details through to it, you can see it's pushed everything except the horizontal bars because they are shared Yeah. So to deal with that, it's really just a matter of taking the the um, um, horizontal bar, control C to copy it, and then we can purely just copy it up from this point to this point to this point. Now in this process, because they have now essentially arrived after the others, there will be a layer problem. So if I click on this one and say, move to the outer it fixes that up and if i click on this one i say move to the outer it fixes that up and now we have all three walls perfectly splicing with each other and there's no clashes in the reinforcement everything is perfect now all we have to do is if we look on the top again we've got the extension of these bars and they're all going to be similar to that so a quick trick here is if i click on this bar and on this one and on this one and i click on on this one's modifier and I and I grab the uh, copy properties and then I pick this one holding my shift key and pick this one I can just say modify and that fixes it up just like that so that fixes up now on this one we can see we've got a bit of a clash there so easy resolution with this uh, with this would be to click on those three click on their modifier and instead of having an 150 we go one, uh, this bar is a, is a 24, so it's got a 29 diameter. So we'll take 30 millimeters off that. So if we make that 120 millimeter into the slab and we say enter, you can see how it pulls that down and it makes that shorter so it can just slot in below there. And these two slot in, in between there and that's sort of still enough uh, projection into the slab and that's a very good solution. So that was pretty much uh, 12 minutes of just reinforcing our old new wall. So, um, you know, you can you can actually create, uh, uh, you can have a lot of control over manually uh, uh, detailing core walls, and you can do a, 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 an arrangement like this fairly quickly. Um, you can imagine we've got that one, we could probably copy most of its properties to this side, and then that one again is just a, you know, 10 minute detail and copy op. So it's a, it's a pretty quick quick uh, exercise. It's, it's, um, it's actually quite enjoyable to work with rebar sets. And uh, again, if we just go to the, click on the panel, right click, we go to inquire, we look at our cost unit report. And in here, we will find our cost unit weight, the total weight, we will find the, the rebar weight. So there's 1.8 tons in that. And the concrete weight is 16.4 tons and the volume is seven. And if we go down to the bending schedule, you can see we actually only ended up with three different bars in, in, in those, um, in, in, in that configuration, which is pretty good. Um, I think um, in the next video, we will deal with tapered or um, sloping walls. Thank you for watching.